Hi, welcome back to this series where we teach you to work with the Hebel One if you don't have any Braille knowledge. This is the second episode, so if you didn't see the first episode yet, make sure to go there first and only then come back to the second episode. Last week we discussed a few things, really the basics. So how do I hold the Hebel One, how do I connect it with my phone, and also the first 10 letters of the Braille alphabet. And this week we'll go a little bit further, we'll actually complete all the letters in the alphabet in Braille, and we'll also talk about numbers and how you can type full sentences. First thing for this episode is to start understanding the logic of Braille. Because once you know the logic of Braille, you might realize you already know the full Braille alphabet. So what's the logic of Braille? Well, the first 10 letters that you learned, so the A to the J, they all have a new pattern. So you all have to remember which dot combinations fit with each letter. The next 10 letters, you don't have to do this. Why? Because the next 10 letters are the same combination of buttons, but you just add dot three. So as an example, if I would have the letter A, which is just pressing button one, the A, the K, which is the 11th letter, would be dot one plus dot three. So the A becomes the K. Now I could do the same with the B. 10 letters after the B is the L. So where the B is a certain one and two, the L is one, two, and three. And that's the logic of Braille. So this continues throughout the rest of the alphabet. So from A to J is the same as from K to T. And next we have the same thing again, um, from U to Z. We again use this logic, but instead of just adding dot three, we also add dot six. So the U, which is the A, plus, plus, dot, three, and six. And the V, which is the B, plus, dot, three, and six. That's the logic of Braille. So that's what we're going to do today first. We'll first teach you the next letters. But remember, just, you just need to know the first 10 and you already know the entire alphabet. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to ensure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. So what I'll do, I again open the notes app and from there we'll start typing the different letters. Um, I'll go over them quite quickly. Um, just like last episode, we will also put all of them in the description and also a link to a blog where we talk about Braille and how the alphabet works. Um, just write them down for yourself or put them in an audio note or somewhere where it's accessible for you to start practicing. Uh, you don't have to remember all of them right away. But after this video, you can practice now the different letters that you've learned. And use this logic of Braille to remember them. It makes it a lot easier. All right, we'll start with letter K. Um, and it's we're now ranging from K to T, which is the next 10 letters in the alphabet after A to J. Remember, they are all the same as A to J, but we just add dot three there. So what I'll do is I'll mention the letter and the code of Braille and also where it comes from. So we start with the K. The K is the same as the A plus button three. So button one and three. Okay. The L, which is the same as the B. So it's letter one, two, plus dot three. So the L is one, two, and three. Okay. Then we go to the M, which is the same as the C. So that's dot button one and four, but plus button three. So then we get one, three, and four. Okay. Then we go to the M, to the N. Uh, the N is the same as the D, plus button three. So it will be one, three, four, and five. Next is the O, which is the same as the E, so that's button 1 and 5, plus button 3, so it will be 1, 3, and 5, which is like an open arrow. Oh, I also like to remember this. Next, we get the P, which is the same as the F, so it's 1, 2, and 4, plus button 3, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4. It also looks a little bit like a P, it feels like a P. Then we go to the Q, which is the same as the G, which also makes sense because they look the same, um, which is one, two, four, and five, plus the button three. So you get one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. Next, we get the R, which is the same as the H, plus button three. So it will be one, two, three, and five. Yeah. Next, we have the S, which is the same as the I, plus button three. So it would be two, three, and four. Yeah. And lastly, we have the T, which is the same as the J plus button three. So it will be two, three, four, and five. It also looks a bit like the T from Tetris. That's how I like to remember it. It, is, it looks like a Tetris sign. So the T is two, three, four, and five. Those are the next 10 letters. So K to T, um, they are the same as the first 10, but all have button three added to this. Um, 
So that's it. Next 10 layers. You already know them. Uh, you just have to link the letters in your head, which are links, and add dot three to it. Um, we'll, we'll straight up finish the entire alphabet, and then I'll give some recommendations on how you can practice this now. All right, we're now at the last six letters of the Braille alphabet, which is the U, the V, the W, the X, the Y, and the Z. Again, they follow the same logic, but it's a little different, and uh, I'll explain you why during the letter. So first, we just start with the first letter, which is the U, which comes from the A, because it's the 21st letter. And the U is again A, which will be the one, but plus three and six. So U is one, three, and six. The next would be the V. This is the same as the B, which is both in one and two, plus three and six. So the V is one, two, three, and six. Now we get to the W, but the W is a little bit different in Braille, unfortunately. The reason for this is that Braille was invented in France uh, over 200 years ago by a man called Louis Braille. Now, in that time, there actually wasn't a W that was used in the French alphabet, and that's why it's not there in Braille. So the W, they added in later, so it doesn't follow the same logic, um, but the W is pretty much the opposite of the R. That's how I like to remember it. Um, so it's button two, four, five, and six. Yeah, now, X, Y, and Z, again, follow the same pattern as before, and you can pretty much assume that you can skip the W, and then the logic makes sense. So the X is actually linked to the C, which will be button one and four, but then added three and six, so it'll be one, three, four, and six. Yeah, same with the Y, so Y, uh, is linked to the D, so that's one, two, four, uh, one, four, and five. But instead, you add now three and six. So the Y is one, three, four, five, and six. And then we get to the Z, which is actually linked to the E, um, but just adding three and six. So the Z would be one, three, five, and six. And that's it. That's already the entire alphabet. Um, and when you know the entire alphabet, you actually also know the numbers and some of the punctuations. But we'll get in there in a little bit. For now, make sure you write down all these different letters. You can, again, copy it from the description or go to the link there to our blog where we have this explained for you. Um, but make sure there's some place where you can look them up. That makes it easier for you when you start practicing. Before we start practicing, I'll uh, name a few more things like how to do a, a backspace, a space bar, and the enter. So you can actually start typing full sentences and properly practice with this because that would be your next step. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to ensure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. All right, so now we know the entire alphabet. The next thing we'll learn is a, com uh, a combination of functions to make it easier for you to now type full sentences and write stories. Uh, and you can actually already do this. So first we need to find the backspace. How are you gonna correct when we type something wrong? Well, the backspace, the big key on the left, which is button seven, um, you can use this to delete a letter. Now, if you're not used to working in VoiceOver or TalkBack, it will say the same letter you deleted, but with a different tone. For a space after a word, you just use the big black button on the right side, or button eight as a space bar. And every time you press this, it will enter a space bar view. For a enter, this is uh, a combination of button one and eight at the same time. So it will say new line if you're in the notes app. Um, and enter, if you're, for example, using an app like WhatsApp or Messenger, it will also send the message for you. Now, if you just want to create a new line, which is also a shift enter, you would use button eight and two at the same time. So eight and two at the same time is shift enter, eight and one is a normal enter. Now you know how to remove letters, you know how to do a space bar, you know how to do an enter. The final part to this is to learn how to do capitals and numbers. And this is actually super simple. You don't have to learn any new ways of writing the A in a capital, for example. Now in Braille, we have something very smart, which is a capital sign um, and a number sign. So a capital sign and a number sign go in front of the capital or in front of the number. Um, so how this works, for example, with a capital. Um, in a capital sign, you would use first button six, which means that my next letter would be a capital. When you press dot six on the table, uh, just a short press. You also feel a vibration because it will let you know your next letter is going to be a capital. So I press button six. Now I press an A and it will say cap A, capital A. And that's how you write a capital. So just a single press on the capital sign and then now any letter you type next will become a capital. The same actually works for numbers. So for numbers, I'll type the number sign and the number sign is button three, four, five, and six, a short press. 
Now again, I feel a vibration on my Hable because it tells me it's in the number mode. And now my A becomes a one, my B becomes a two, my C a three, my D a four, etc. So it actually follows the same logic as the alphabet. So to type a one, I would just type an A. If I want to type a two, I would type a B. And that's how you can now type numbers as well. So you can see that just the first 10 letters actually will show you the entire alphabet and the numbers. And you can already type all of this now. The next thing is just to practice. Okay, we're now at the final part. And this final part is how do you start practicing? So this is just an introduction. And in the description, you find all the information again of how this works. But the most important thing now is to start practicing. I'm numbering what all the different combinations are. But ideally, after this episode, after practicing for maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks, you don't necessarily remember the numbers, you just can do this on muscle memory. That's where you want to eventually get to, because then you become really fast with typing. So how do you do this? Well, first things first, we'll put some links in the description of websites where you can practice writing words. And these are websites where we checked on accessibility and you can Learn to, for example, there's one website where you type the entire alphabet, there's a website where you can type words, and you can just practice to uh, copy whatever you have to type. This is a great way because you'll practice a lot um, and it goes really fast, but you have to actively practice. Now we know from experience that this is sometimes a bit of a burden. So what is better is if you start doing this in your daily tasks. So let's say you every day send some messages to friends, maybe in a WhatsApp group, in a messenger group, maybe you check your social media every day. From now on, start to slowly do this more and more with your Hable one. So where normally you would send the text maybe in dictation or with the QWERTY keyboard, let's now send the first two messages, three messages of the day, just with your Hable. If you don't remember how to type something, go back to your checklist where you have it written down or your, or your audio menu where you can find how to type it. And just start with this, a few messages a day that you use with the Hable One, and slowly, as you become faster with this, start doing this more and more. So really have it in your daily tasks. This makes it way less of a burden, way more fun, and you'll notice that after a few days, you'll already be quite fast. You'll be able to incorporate this in most of your daily tasks. Now that's our advice, that's how we would recommend you to practice. In our next episode, we'll go into punctuation marks, we'll go into different type of Braille codes, and we'll even start uh, by adding some contractions. Now, you don't have to know what any of that is. We'll discuss that in the next episode. Uh, we hope to see you there. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and follow us, because we will be uploading a lot more trainings like these. Uh, and I hope they're very helpful for you. Thank you, and see you in the next episode. Hable, always in control. <laughs>